we are back in the East for this episode of Wana Makan. Yes, back in Tampines, and we are going to meet up with Singapore international goalkeeper Hassan Sunny, who has started his own food stall, Dapo Hassan or Hassan's Kitchen, putting it in English. So let's find out what it is all about with the Lion City Sailor goalkeeper now exchanging his goalkeeping gloves for those plastic food gloves we like to see in coffee shops. Let's find out. And here is the main man, busy as usual. Just talking about those plastic gloves, Hassan. How is it going? All good, man. How are you? I'm good, good. I'm good. So I've seen plenty of Dapo Hassan on social media. Yeah. Wanted to come here and uh, try it out for myself. So yep. are you going to get me some dishes and let's yes. uh, talk about food? All right. You want to makan? Yes, let's go. All right. Ooh, all right, Hassan, um, you've laid out quite a spread for me right yep. here. All the specialities. Yes. Run me through what we have. Like the formation is like a 2 1, one formation <laughs> that we have right here. Okay, uh, this is the, to me, is the most popular ones here, which is the Lontong. People around here, the residents, they love it. So that's why I named this as a popular one because this full of vegetables. Okay. Uh, glutinous rice and tahu. So next one will be this is uh, Mi Rebos. Okay. It's quite sweet. In a way. Okay. And this is the it's like the afternoon snack will be tahu goreng. Alright. Again it's uh, tahu and peanut grated sauce. Grated okay. peanut sauce. This is of course uh lopez. This is fantastic by the way. Yes, yeah. uh, again it's glutinous rice, with coconut and sugar syrup. Okay. Yeah. Looks fantastic. Look, I'm gonna dig into this. Uh, yep. but why don't you start telling me more about this this store that you have? I think uh, three, four weeks in, into business uh, yeah. at the moment. Why go into the, the F&B industry? You're a recognized goalkeeper, you're happy between the sticks. Why, yeah. why go into this? Because I do have my relatives, my uncles. We do have some shops as well. Okay. And when I was young, when I was, you know, back in 10, 11 years old, I was helping out in their stores. So I, I, I love the environment. Because, uh, you know, in a way you feed people, you yeah. serve people. So I love to make people happy and all you need is good feedback. And that will, you know, despite all the long hours standing, you feel happy. So it wasn't just a whim like, oh, I just wanted to, to start no. a food stall. It's, you had Since the history, yes. you, you knew through your, your relatives how, yes. how the food business Correct. works. But why start this uh, Nasi Padang store okay. here in Tampines? Um, no, I told myself when I was young, I said, okay, when I grow up, okay, let's try. You know, get one stall and then just just do my own business. This was always an ambition of yours? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, to have my own, like, a small business, a food F&B business. Yeah. So, you know, I'm 36 years old with three daughters and I, I must plan something ahead. Um, you know, like life after football. Yeah. So, so I think this this year has been an unlucky year for a lot a lot of people. Yeah. But uh, I can say that I'm lucky to have uh, this stall for me. Um, you know, it was just coincidence. Mm. It's good. Mm -mm. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's coincidence. You know, I was around here and then, and yeah, it, it was empty. Then I just within one week, two weeks, and I got the stall. Just really quick. Yes. So um, from from the start of an idea to you setting up shop for the very first day, that was like I mean, a matter of days, basically. Yes. And let me go deep, uh, deeper into this. Okay. Dapu Hassan is uh, a translation of Hassan's Kitchen. Yeah, your kitchen. Yes. Yeah. And I wanted to name it Hassan's Kitchen. But as you know, around here, there are a lot of Malay people, the Muslim community is quite, quite high. Yeah. So I had to change to a Malay name just to get the customers coming. Um, and did you get, I know a lot of your teammates, yep. national team or within Lion City, City Sailors have, have gone into the F&B industry as well. Yes. You have experience with your relatives, but did you seek advice from them before starting a store? No, to be honest, I went through, I went through, I had to go down to the ground level. I had to wash the, the pot, the yep. box, everything. Okay. So I went down to that level just to, just to make sure I know what I'm going through so that it, like now, I know what my staff is doing. 
whether it's right or wrong. Yep. So I learned everything within a few weeks. So that's when I feel that when I'm ready to open a store, I'll open a store. So you had no reservations about starting a football store? Did you think at the back of your mind, how am I going to cope with this? I have my, my football training with yeah. Lion City Sailors. International duty starts yes. next year. You have the Suzuki Cup and, and all that comes with national team and, and traveling and stuff. Right. Any doubts that have crept into your head about how am I going to manage that and this at the same time? Uh, thank goodness, the, I think this year we do not need to travel much. Yeah. So I would like to take this time to make sure that you know my business is stable before I do fly away for, for games, yeah. overseas travel. So that's why now, um, not say I'm rushing, but I'm, I'm, I, I try to make things organized. You and, you and me, we have, um, we follow the same people on social media, more, yeah. more or less the same people on social media. And everyone, um, I was going to say at his dog, but obviously no, no pets allowed here, but yeah. everyone has, has come and, and tried out. So how has been the response overall since, since opening day? No, I'm, I have to be very open. Because I've, I'm, I'm very new to this. So, literally, anyone that comes in here and eat my food, I will go to them and just say, how's my food? Is there anything that I can improve on? So, I think that's the only way to learn. And, and you know, I have to be positive, even though there will be setbacks. And, yeah, I, I, some of them say it's good. Some of them say it's, not say bad, but there are areas to improve. So, I think that is a, a lesson for me. So immediately I'll take all those lessons and just go to the back of the kitchen and say, okay, we need to improve from this. So I think that's the only way for me to learn. Who's involved in, in this whole uh, process here? Who do you have involved from your family? Um, and, and no, stuff? in fact, both of my families. My family, my in-laws. My in-laws, um, especially at the back of the kitchen. My, my family, which is my sister, are the one in charge of the, the quiz. Okay. So they, she'll send quiz every morning. So even my, my parents are involved as well, like Apo Apo, and then my sister is an admin of my social media account. Okay. So I, I get everyone involved yeah. just to make sure this is a family business. Proper family business. Yes. So, okay. Yeah, it's not just me, it's everyone. You're a modern day professional. Uh, I, I know you're very strict on, on what you eat. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing you tucking into Mirabus, I'm seeing you tucking <laughs> into to Tao Goreng. Yeah. Um, are you tempted by, by the food that, that you have in your stall when I know you're like you know you're trying to be very professional and not trying to take some some bits of, 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 of uh, tahu goreng here and there or whatever food? So has it been has it been difficult to fight off temptation? Um, I'm not sure whether you notice there's no meat on the table right now because that's true. Um, I'm a vegan, so I don't really eat meat seafood. Then I think that's the way for me to take care of my diet. Because I'm 36. If I don't care, if I don't, don't take care of my food, as you know, a lot of sickness or illness will come yeah. very fast. So <laughs> I don't taste all the food in here, okay. to be honest. Fair because um, I just taste the gravy. So I think that helps a lot. And then, um, then again, I need to stay hydrated. As you know, long hours standing yeah. and the, the heat inside. So yeah, just keep on drinking water. Yeah, I'm going to touch on that. Uh, those two points that you just made. First of all, I know it's long hours here. You're committed to the, to the, to the project, to, to this Nasi Parang store. How do you manage this and, and football training? Because these are long hours. You are standing yeah. up six, right. seven hours a day. So how does that affect your football training? How do you manage it? If I have morning training, you know, I'll come back here straight away, have my lunch, and then I'll just continue work for another three, four hours. And then I'll tuck in um, quite early, close to 9 p.m. Yeah. So I make sure I have good rest, good sleep. If I do have more afternoon training, that's when I will face a lot of issues. Yeah. Because I need to be here just to make sure I monitor everything. So I'll be here, let's say, 7.30 in the morning till let's say 9, 9.30 but the busy hours will be at 10 to 1 yeah, lunchtime so I'll make sure everything is right everything is, is in, in, in good condition before the busy period comes so once I feel okay I go back and just uh, just rest at home now the next thing is that you mentioned that you're vegan I knew, I, I knew this before already having had chats with you yeah, uh, yeah. through the years but I think a lot of 
the viewers watching now yeah. do not know that about you, and that's yeah. and that's how professional Hassan Sani is. I mean, you you you've chosen this lifestyle. Yeah. Um, for those who are not really um, in the know about what being vegan is, can you explain that? And when did you make this change in your lifestyle? Um, vegan is totally no meat, meat free. Um, I do drink milk and uh, eggs, but meat wise, there's nothing got to do with um, animal abuse or anything. Yeah. But it's just health issue. So, in fact, last year when I was uh, I was having my holiday in <laughs> in London. So I saw this um, Netflix program, I think Game Changer. I think everyone watched it. Yes. <laughs> so I decided to try for two weeks. And then I, during that two weeks, I felt good. You know, when I, when I woke up in the morning, I don't feel lazy. I don't feel... Because you, in a way, you, if you don't eat meat, you spend less and your body spends less energy digesting food. Yeah. So when you wake up in the morning, you don't feel as tired as, you know, as, as usual. So after two weeks, okay, maybe another two weeks. That's one month. So after one one month, I got the hang of it, and yeah, now close to a year now. So you've only been you only been vegan for a year. Yeah, yeah. So but before that, no, I'm 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 not a fan of white rice, so I don't eat rice. Okay. So plus, no meat, I lost a lot of it. I lost close to seven eight kgs. And 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 but but then again, I feel good. Did that's, like that's what matters most. No. It did not, not, the loss of weight did not affect you? No, it? in fact, I feel better. I feel lighter. Recovery-wise, it's going to be better. As you know, when you're 36, your recovery time will be sl slow. Yeah. But then again, I feel good every every single day. And yeah, I need to watch my, my timing in, when it comes to this business. So I make sure I have good sleep, good food, good eat, good uh, diet. So then again, it's how I manage my time. What would be your ideal meal times and what would you eat throughout the day? I make sure I, I load, I mean, when I really eat is after training. So besides that, I don't really eat much. Man. I, breakfast is just granola, Greek yogurt, um, not much juice, but coffee. After training, then I'll, I'll eat, I'll load. But then, yeah, that's the way. I know already been my, um, Hey, coach of Lion City Sailors yeah. is a it's a stickler for discipline, but diet as well. Has he tried to change the 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 eating habits of, of the players at, at Lion City Sailors? No, he's as you know he's not from this uh, region, so what he eats is totally opposite of what we eat. Yeah. And when you have McDonald's for breakfast, or when you have um, in, um, fast food. For breakfast, he will he will he will look at you, you know, and say you're not you're not supposed to eat this. Yeah. So and again, he 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 instill a lot of professionalism in our players. But I think that's a good sign. That's, we need to do that. We need to learn. Speaking of helping with recovery, do you have a cheat meal? Do you ever allow yourself a cheat meal? And what would a cheat meal for yourself, being vegan, consist of? For me, it's just pizza. Okay. So yes, and then again, it's just cheese pizza. Yeah. Um, Margaritas. Yeah. So it's just that nothing much for me, and um, but then again, it's I have to control my kids as well. So you know, kids will will, will look at what the parents eat right, yeah. do, right? So when I take care of my food before, initially they were eating all this junk food, but now because I'm a vegan, they had to change as well. So have they become vegan as no, well? No, no, they, they can't. <laughs> they say no, daddy, I cannot. I need chicken. I need meat. <laughs> so um, yeah. When you're growing up, free, free, uh, being a vegan, um, what kind of food do you remember growing up eating when you were uh, in your teenage I years? Eat, I eat chicken rice every day. Extra, extra rice, extra chicken. I was thirty, you know, I was forty-three. With okay, wow, size, yeah. And when I'm, was this? Ten years ago, eight years ago. Okay. So I do my my game meal is chicken rice, extra chicken, extra rice. That that's was your go-to meal. Yeah. Okay. So that's why you. I, that's why I. I told you just now. I lost six kg, eight kg. Do you because miss it? I, no. Because I was. I was lazy. I was. I was heavy. Yeah. So. Why we want to miss all those time when you feel better now? So. Do you think your transformation from eating anything you want to being vegan will prolong your football career by an extra two, three years, maybe even longer yeah. than that? I hope it helps me. 
But then again, um, I do have friends who are, who are 36 years old and they're, they're feeling like 40 years old. Yeah. And yeah, so when they see me train and when they see me do things, I'm not saying without any injuries, but yeah. lesser injuries as compared to them. They do ask me, hey, how you take care of yourself? So when I explain to them this, they say, oh no, I cannot go this way. I need my chicken, I manage. Yeah. But then again, it's, it's you know, it's, it's how you manage yourself, your life, your diet. So I chose this because I want this, you know, for the better of my life, for football life. I want to prolong my career, so I have to do whatever it takes. So we have good food, we've been talking about good food, but do you remember a particular time when perhaps you had horrible food, your worst food experience? What do you remember of it? Where was that? Tajikistan. Tajikistan? Yeah. With the when national team? National team. Okay. I remember we had, um, I think, half of the team, I think, or three quarters of the team had um, diarrhea, stomach ache, uh, food poisoning, uh, and the food was terrible. So I remember Indra was, you know, half time, you know, before the game, they asked the match officials if, let's say, anyone has a, a anyone needs to rush to the toilet, can the player just go off? Why? Because you all because had during the game, sick. Yes. Talk about the timeline. So you, the, the players were already sick prior yes, to the match? correct. Okay. And then half time, I think some of the players just rush in yeah. uh, to go to the toilet. So it's, it was because of the food and... Do you remember what, what it was or just I think everything? it was like, you know, all these places, um, they serve, they like to eat like bread with chicken, just like that. But I heard the chicken is not fresh, it was not fresh and the bread was hard as, as, a, as a rock. So yeah, it was, it was, it was an unforgettable were you, forgettable moment. Were you uh, part of yeah, those yeah, yeah, that, right. that got sick yeah. as well? And then the places, the hotels like, if you go toilet here, the shower is here. So you need to walk across. So imagine your teammates lying down and <laughs> you had to go to toilet. So it was a bad trip, plus bad food. And, and, and then the players were, were down with uh, food poisoning. Yeah. So, and then, but we won the game, I think, 1-0. Uh, Alam Shah scored, so if despite, I'm not wrong. So despite all of that, you still yeah. managed to, to get a, a good response in, in It the was game. Uh, during Reddy's time. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, that still doesn't top what Rafi Ali by the way, said in another episode of, uh, of Wana Makan, I shall not, I shall not repeat uh, what his worst food experience was. <laughs> Suffice to say, um, I was in shock for a couple of days after that, that episode. Um, but let's talk about a little bit about, about, your, about your football career so far. Um, your, your rivals with, with Izuan in terms of the Singapore number one jersey. For Izuan, he will always be known for, for that Japan game where he made save after save. Yep. But for yourself, what would be your particular standout moment for the Singapore national team? If you talk about the domestic football, I think it was the year that be uh, 2014, before I left to Thailand, the year that I won player of the year. So I it won was. The league. Yes, I won the league. And you know, we had a good team, and we had a good coach, Alex Weaver. So everything went well uh, on that year, and then. You know, plus I just came back from ACL injury, yeah. remember? So, so I had I had three tough years prior to that. Then suddenly I came back, uh, won the league, won the SPL, hey, play of the year, and then got the chance to play in Thailand. So that was the like before the Thai, prior to, before the Thailand trip. I think that was the best moment for me. That year, in that general, year because everything, everything went, went right for me. Yeah. You know? and yeah, I think I had to thank. A lot of people for that, like Narong, yeah. goalkeeper coach, even Alex Weaver uh, played quite a big part of it. And yeah, so I cannot forget that year, man. Because despite all the negativity that coaches came to tell me about, you know, you can't play football over again because of injury, you will never be the same again. So I proved many people wrong in yeah. that sense. And then again, you know, I got the chance to play in Thailand. And for the first year, I think I, w I was voted goalkeeper of the year. So that two, two three years was, was were good for me. You worked very closely with uh, John Baric, Baji, when he was yep. part of the national team setup. And he's a big advocate of players flying the trade overseas. I think yeah, uh, yeah, if you're yeah, on yeah. Facebook, you, you see it almost every, every yeah. weekend, you would mention that. 
you are winding down your career, although you still have a few more years, but do you think that chance has, has passed for you to play at the highest level in Europe? Was there ever an opportunity now that you could perhaps reveal to us that you were maybe on the verge of playing in Europe at any, at any league? Nah, I, you know, I had the intention, you know, I, want, you know, I want, wanted to play in Europe. But, and then again, it's difficult for us, for players in this region, to just go there and play. So you need to play in um, outside of the main Europe countries, like in Norway, for about a year or two. And then you can enter, yeah. which is quite difficult. And when you, are think, when you think you are good in this region, when you go there, you're just peanut, you're nobody. Yeah. So you have to be realistic. So then again, I know I cannot go there, as in I cannot reach that level. So that's why um, Thailand was the place for me. And then I, was, I remembered when I was in London last year, I went to holidays. And I think one of the journalists called me, are you in Leicester City? Are you in Leicester City for trial? Are you in Leicester City Because for... you were in England? Yes. Okay. So, but there were rumours from when I was in Thailand. Because uh, when I was playing for Army United, the sponsor for our club is King Power. And you know King Power yes. in Leicester. So when I was there, I was posting photos when I was in London and they told me that, hey, are you there for a lesson sniff a trial? So I laugh about it. That's journalists for you though, yeah. they just sniff a story. Yeah. But then again, how I wish I, I'm in Leicester City now, yeah. I told them. But then again, you know, I'm here for holiday. So yeah, um, no, on serious note, before this, I, w- I told myself that I want to go back to Thailand to play. Because definitely there's, in Thailand, it's a, le- a higher level. Yeah football compared to Singapore. So, I will see how with this. And, and you know, I'm not thinking of retirement at, the, at this very moment. I still want to go as long as possible. Okay. I mean, you have you have your family, you, uh, you have your kids, as you say, growing up. Whatever. So, playing in Thailand, you, you're kind of like missing out on, on, them, on them growing up. So, it's a balancing act, especially now for your age. Um, speaking about the food, which is fantastic, by the way, Hassan, uh, recommend guys to come down to Dapo Hassan for authentic Malay cuisine, uh, I should say. Any food you never ever touch. Putting aside the, the meat, but uh, was there something that you never ever try or you just mentally, you, it just psychs you out by, by seeing it on a plate that you never ever touch? For me, mutton or nasi biryani, mutton. Okay. Because, I know, you know, nasi biryani is full of ghee. And I'm, I'm against all this food. Yeah. And then plus mutton, yeah. and then it totally not it, not say disgust me, but it totally like I have to avoid all this. <laughs> mutton because of the meat, or because yes. of the gaminess, or mutton because of the meat. Yeah, nasi biryani because of the rice, yeah. and how heavy it is. You yeah. know, you understand? So yeah, when I see that, yeah. yeah thank you. <laughs> thanks, but thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right, I ask everyone this this question: If you could choose three people, past or present, dead or alive, to a meal. Yep. Who would you invite? What would the meal be? And what would the topic of conversation be? And, and I also would like those watching at home to, to put in their um, thoughts on this as well. Like if you could have a meal with anyone in the world, past or present, dead or alive, who would you invite? And where would you, where would you have that meal? Let us know in the comment section below. But for you, Hassan, who would it be? Um, that would be my late grandmother uh, from my dad's side. Um, because uh, she passed away uh, in my room, so she was sta- she was living with me for quite a while, and she passed away in my room, and 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 she's she's the nicest woman I ever met. I wish that I could spend more time with her. So I remember when she passed away, um, you know she 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 used to sleep on my bed, and I was on the floor. So, you know, every time and every night after she passed away, I feel that I sense that she, she's still sleeping over there. So, yeah, then again, I think I miss, I miss her, my late grandma. And food-wise, um, you know, I, how I wish I can just share with her what I have now with her, yeah. So, so just that. Um, yeah, I would love to cook for her, man. So that's all, yeah, especially Thai food. You know, I can cook a bit of Thai food. Just a bit, one or two, yeah. yeah. So I would love to share like uh, a simple part-time meal with her, yeah. and talk about what I want to do in the future. When I was young, back then, yeah. 
So yeah, I regret those moments that I couldn't spend more time with her. Um, you called it Dapo Hassan. Do you cook? Uh, Maybe actually, I touched on that. Yeah, I, I cook a few uh, like vegetables, my own food. Okay. So, just that. That's, That's it. Yeah. But do you have any intention to yeah. go deeper into yes, it? Yes, of course. Okay. Uh, if I have more time in the kitchen, I will do that. I would, I would love to learn a lot of things. Uh, besides cleaning, washing, uh, cooking is uh, is what I want to learn. Okay. It's not easy though, because as you know, cook they took they would take years they they took years to master their yeah. their meal their dish. So I cannot just expect one day or two days to be good. So yeah. so then again, yeah, it will take some time, but I have to start somewhere. And what do you, where do you see this growing into? Uh, are you gonna like open more Dapo Hassans around Singapore? And, uh, and is this gonna be what you're gonna be focused on? I know you still have a career to go. Thirty six. You, I think if I ask you how long you're gonna play, you're gonna say you're gonna play until 40. So when the day comes when you do finally call it quits yep. and hang up your gloves, is it something that you're gonna go full force on? Um, yeah. You know, then again, I'm just two weeks into business, and and for now, I have to make sure that everything is stable now. Uh, in terms of um, everything, the admin stuff, the marketing, social media. So when everything is just perfect it's ready to go like a daily basis then probably next one i'll move on to like you know delivery okay. online delivery yeah. online orders so after that probably if i can like, because my list is three years so yeah. i have i will i will have to move out one day so um but we'll see what happens next but i probably if i have a bigger space i uh, would love to have a bigger space i can picture it now Dapo Hassan, available on Grab, Deliveroo, <laughs> available in Tampines, Jurong, yep. Yishun, Woodlands, Hopefully, all around, all around yep. Singapore. That's the plan. Yep. Alright Hassan, thank you for your time man. And wish you all the best thank you. in the SPL.